Last night, the Mustangs took the top spot in the Mink League North Division with, once again, another walk-off victory to defeat the A's. Tonight, St. Joe looks to continue their dominant homestand against the Chillicothe Mudcats. Welcome back to the legendary Phil Welch Stadium. I'm Ryan Blank alongside Jack Bartlett. And Jack, it was the late game magic on offense that fueled the Mustangs' victory last night. And each time it's a different guy. Last <laughs> night it was Noah Bodenhausen who sent the St. Joe Loyals home with a walk-off single. What is it about this team that just continues to rack up these walk-off wins at home? The 0-2 pitch from Barry. Grounder up the middle, back to Paul. Six, four, three, double play, and the Mustangs are out of the inning. Gentry challenged it, and his challenge was unsuccessful, so the count will stay at one and two. Now look to put away Gentry. He hits another one high and deep to left center field, going back is Walker, and he has hit another! Tyler Gentry with his second home run of the day. Want to know the pitch. Line and through. One run comes in to score. Rounding third, heading for home is Carey. He will score. Trevor McCollum drives in two, and the Mustangs have their first lead of the night. The 1 0 pitch. Flared out to left center field. Holding, giving chase. Holding, diving, and he makes the play. First pitch to Corper. Ball is hit out to right field. That ball is deep. Going back at the wall is Davis, and that ball is out of here. The first homer of the year for Carl Corper. Ties it up here in the fourth. Schmidt delivers the pitch, grounded up the middle. Bodenhausen dives and makes a play. The toss to Salgado is in time. Ball game. The Mustangs stay alive in the race for the Mink League North. Still 2-2, two and two, another quality at bat from a loss. The pitch, line to the right center field gap. That drops. Heading for third is Caballero. That ball will roll all the way to a warning trap. Caballero is rounding third, heading for home, and he will score. It is a one-run game here in the ninth. And Malas is on second with an RBI double. The pitch from Hardy. Soft grounder into the 5-5 hole. Gets through. Rounding third and heading for home is Sands. The throw in time. Got him. Ball game. Say hello to first place St. Joe. Down to the last three outs. The Mustangs need to score at least one to extend this game. Salgado heads out to second due to the extra innings rule. Leading off is Noah Bonehausen with the top of the order up with him, Wagner, and Carey. Another slugfest between these two teams. Stalia took the last one 13-9. Mustangs want to take this one down to their last three outs. Droge still in the pitch. He picks over to second, nearly overthrows Webb. Salgado's back safely, and you saw Webb try to pull a fast one, moving around like the ball went in the center field trying to get Salgado to go. But he's not falling for that. I saw earlier in this game Noah Bodenhausen, who is at the plate. Bodenhausen gets a bunt down. Nobody's over at first. Bodenhausen is on with a leadoff bunt single. And now the tying run is 90 feet away. And you could see D Triplett on that play running down the first base path. And that is what caused no one to be at first. And he started jumping up and down in frustration. Because the second baseman is supposed to be the one to go cover the bag there. That's not on D Triplett. He is supposed to crash on the bunt. So there, it's up to the second baseman, Webb, to get over there and make that play. And that is what that frustration from D Triplett is about. As a former first baseman, I would be extremely frustrated with that because I know I'm doing my job but I need the guys behind me to pick to pick it up as well. McAndrews goes out for a quick meeting with Droge and is keeping him in. Now it's Jack Wagner. He drove in two earlier. And here, the Mustangs will be fine with a double play because that will tie this game up. Corner infielders in, middle infielders playing double play depth. Runners on the corners, no out. First pitch to Wagner, hits him on the helmet. He looks to be okay, embraces with the catcher for a sec, but now the bases are loaded with no outs. The game winning run is on second and Dylan Carey is coming up. And he has another shot at redeeming himself after a little bit of sloppy defensive play from him earlier in this game. Now, infield is in. No room for error. 
Carey with one swing of the bat can potentially win it. Bases loaded, no outs for the Nebraska commit. And Droz just balked. The game is tied. Droz tried to step off, but he balked. And the game is tied at 10 in the 10th. Wow. The second time he has balked tonight. The third one for the Bombers tonight. Droz is furious and confused. A sack fly can win it. Runners on second and third, no outs. Game winning run on third. First pitch to carry, called strike one. McAndrews is intentionally walking Dylan Carey. And I have to say that's probably the right decision. Carey is a guy who's very powerful. Now it's up to Rob Butler, the catcher. Base is loaded, no outs, game is tied, has a chance to win it. Outfield is playing in as well. With the power that Rob Butler has. They're throwing all their eggs in one basket, hoping that he does not hit one over their heads. Yeah, and McAndrews said he'd rather face Rob Butler than Dylan Carey. I'm not sure I'd rather be facing one or the other in this situation because Rob Butler is hitting 306, and but Carey hitting 419. First pitch to Butler was inside for ball one. Infield is completely in, all on the grass. Any ground ball will go home. The 1 0 pitch to Butler is fouled back and out of play. Count is now even at 1 and 1. And the Bombers needing a strikeout here. So for Rob Butler, it is crucial that he doesn't swing at any pitch that isn't necessary. 1-1, one, one, he lines it into left field. Walk it off, St. Joe. The Mustangs win it, 11-10. Rob Butler closes it out with a walk-off single. Carl, tie game in the sixth. You come up and you hit a solo homer. What was the approach in that situation? I was just trying to get a good pitch and put a good swing on it. <laughs> and, uh, oh my gosh. I did, I did, so that's all you can ask for. Team is looking hot right now, one five in a row, 10 out of the last 13. What's going well for you guys? I think we just went through a lot of uh, struggle earlier in the year and finally just putting everything together and stuff's finally going our way, so just keep it rolling. And lastly, the starting pitching has looked fantastic. Both pitchers going deep into the game past two nights, seven innings pitched. What does that do for the team knowing that you've got guys on the mound who are really in the zone really well? Yeah, I think it just gives us more confidence as an offense, knowing that we have guys going out there with energy and fighting for us, and so it just gives us more to build on and gives us a reason to, you know, get things going.